you consider yourself normal, then this is not the show for you. Please go somewhere else. This is WYRD. If it's getting weird, it's got to be the Weird Mountain Gals Show. You're listening to Byron and Alicia, the Weird Mountain Gals. both have been racing around like lunatics today <laughs> and um we both of us eating lunch while we're doing the podcast so pardon my crunching and my full mouth i'm almost done i swear i'm almost done i am too i got about two bites and then yeah, I'm done. Too. <laughs> oh my goodness i bet your well, kitchen smells good right now y'all she is cooking collards mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. Well, I've got a lid on the pot, so it didn't. It, it's lightly fragranced, but not too strong. <laughs> but y'all may hear me get up and go take the lid off the pot and stir it, just to make sure. That's yeah, I got a up. deal today. I got a deal on, at the grocery store on collards. Now you've got a whole were, mess of them. Yeah, they were kind of kindly, as they say, kindly dried out. And a few of them were getting very yellow, but the bulk of them, and it's like, I, I'm guessing 10 pounds of collard greens. Mm. And I didn't lose much of them. I, mean, I cut all the ends off, wow. you know, those stem ends because they were dry. Uh, but yeah. golly, it's a lot. I will, I'll put it in the freezer tonight, buddy. We'll be having That's, collards till it's time to grow collards. That is so awesome. Collards and cornbread. Uh-huh. Mm. Collards make everything better. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They're my my favorite cooking green. Are they? Mm-hmm. Maybe yep, mine. I'm not sure. I mean, I like them all. I like mustard greens. I like kale. Mm-hmm. I like any of that. Those big old thick leafy greens. Me too. Uh, and I, they're very healthy for you too. And we're lucky because we can literally grow them in the backyard if you want to. And you can. You kind of do, them, don't so. you? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yep. Hey, I wanted to ask you a gardening question. Have Have you ever seen a strawberry that the little seeds have all sprouted? Oh no, but I saw that on um, maybe Facebook yesterday. Yeah, it looks so weird. I've never seen that in my life. I was just wondering if you knew how to make that happen. So I guess not, though. It's I right. don't because those little seed seeds are not true seeds. Right. I, didn't I, think so. I can't say any more logical about that. I just know that they're not true seeds. Hmm. Um, I don't know what's going on. I will dig that up, though, and okay. put it on the Weird Mountain Gals Facebook yeah. page. I was curious about that. And did you see, um, oh, in the Weirdling group, Heather had posted something about some dirt crows. I thought that was pretty good. Mm, um, I don't think I saw that. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? You were busy paying attention to the things you should, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Because I, I, you know, you were probably not not looking for earth critters. I think it might have been the earth critters she posted it on. Not weird. Oh, okay. I, so I'm not sure. Anyway, I told um, you I have been I've been eat up with this train derailment up in um, East. Um, and how do they say it? They say Palestine, I think, in Ohio. That derailment on the Ohio River. I've been yeah. just eat up with it. I'm so yeah. mad. I'm so mad. And we talked about this before. You know, the union said we are overworked and it and there's gonna be a disaster because the way the contract, the union, railroad and workers union has with the owners, these people work all the hours of God's hands. They don't have time off. Just, it's just a huge mess. And and the president went in and just basically said, well, you're just going to go to work. And if you don't like it, that's just too damn bad. Oh. With them saying, when was that? 
It's not on Christmas, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say a couple months ago. Yeah, it's the supply chain. We can't we can't be doing anything with the supply chain. Oh, well, well. So rather than negotiating and holding the damn capitalist pig owner's feet to the fire and saying you can't treat workers like this, no, nope, we didn't do that. We just uh, overrode it. Get to work. Get to uh, work. Well, and did you all? Is, is Ohio one of the states that was trying to uh, change the child working worker law? Child labor laws? I, I don't know if Ohio was or not. I, I just, I'm just i just barely aware of that one. But boy, well, isn't that a cracker jack? Yeah, you, you can be 14. And specifically, the industries that they were talking about, and I don't know if there were more, but mining was one. Meat production was another. Meat processing, yeah. Meat processing and cons- maybe construction or something like that, the third. And have we just stepped back in time to <laughs> Dickens, London? Is that what we're doing? they're trying to do away with children because those are some very dangerous occupations. And why would you ever, ever want a 14 year You're too young to drive unless it's a forklift, baby. I mean, come on. We need to protect the children. And half of the people in America crow me out. Half the people in America will be like, well, when I was 14, I was working. I don't see why that was a problem. (laughs) Again, bagging groceries is not like driving a forklift. No, it's not like working around giant razor blade in a meat processing plant. Exactly. My mother's people or mill workers. Yeah. So I've seen I've seen the stuff that comes out of these mills where where the owners and the managers they don't give a damn about who's working. They don't care what happens to them. Right. They're literally a dime a dozen. Right. I mean, you see the injuries that some of them lived through and I'm sure quite a few more of them didn't. Mm-hmm. And it was horrific. And I just I just can't imagine why anybody I mean, I understand poverty makes you really, really desperate to get money and maybe your child is the only way you can make money, but surely we can figure out something besides those industries and children working in. I mean, there's got to be a better answer than that, and if not, then I weep. I can't imagine how this is even happening in 2023. Why are we even having to talk about it? Yeah, why is this a conversation right now? I, ju- I just got us off on a bad start, then I sorry about that. No, I'm, well, I, I actually I'm so mad I can't stand it. I'm madder yeah. than a wet hand. I'm I'm mad and tired at the same time. Yeah. It's like I, I I was serious when I said to you I'm ready for you know to get rid of to be done with tower time and to go into rainbow and glitter time. I mean, I'd almost rather be sappy happy. Then <laughs> there's it's always so much really serious stuff going on that in order to get through it, you have to find a way to separate yourself from it occasionally or else you're just done for. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's you just you'll stress out. You'll you'll just go out of existence from the stress one way or another. And nobody could possibly focus on it 100% of the time and and get through it, I don't think. There's too much to focus on. You know, know, we're all all focused on the damn balloons. Oh, look, there's another balloon. Oh, it's damn Chinese. Send more balloons, more balloons. Well, you got to admit that the first one was a shock to hear about. Uh, The first one, it was like, what? And then you started thinking about it. Or I did. I started thinking about it. I was like, well, like, have we not had this happen before? I'm pretty sure it must have. And I was thinking all these, you know, what about harp? Tell me, how is it related? You know, (laughs) (laughs) you could go into conspiracy land. But the truth is, I don't actually believe anything I'm told just because that's what I'm told. But I'm also do not feel I don't feel compelled to obsess over the situation. Does that make sense? Because you said it last week. 
the Chinese, they already know everything they want to know about us. They've got, you know, TikTok. <laughs> God, isn't that a truth? They've got aminos. They've got all these, you know, we have no idea. And we also had a person who came out last week, and it was an interview that he had done. And he owns, a, a, I guess, a business or an enterprise or whatever. And he admitted that they dealt in, in election propaganda. Yeah. Um, not on our behalf in this country either. So it's no, like, okay, exactly. I mean, we already know that we're being interfered with. And so I think I think that it's interesting and let's let's keep our eye on it and see what the media says about it. Um, but I'm like you, I'm sure there's other things that we need to focus on right now. Well, and there was another <laughs> shooting day before yesterday in Michigan. Yeah, no. Poor Michigan. Isn't well, that the second one that they've had in, in a very close period of time? I think we've had more shootings than we've had days in this year, in 2023. Well, now that's a real proud statistic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm proud of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as long as, anytime you mention, well, you know, it used to be we did, this wasn't going on. So what's going, what has changed that we need to look at? Then immediately somebody's going to come back and go, well, the Second Amendment says I'm having kind of well, I won't. Well, here's what I say. If you own a car, you have to have not a license that says you own it. You've got to have an operator's license. You yeah. have to be prove, you have to pass a test that you know how to use that weapon. If you have an automobile, you, in most states, I'm sure in Texas, this doesn't count, or Tennessee, <laughs> probably. In most way. states, you also have to have insurance on that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So if you do something reckless or stupid, you, whoever you did that reckless, stupid thing to is taken care of. So why can't we do that with these big guns? I say, you got to have an operator's license, and you got to have insurance. Well, so when, you, you, when your 15-year-old steals your damn AR-15 because you've got it under the bed for safekeeping and they go to school and shoot everything up, uh -huh. you know what? Your insurance kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? When you are required to have a permit to operate a pistol, so why not a gun? A shot, you know, I've not always kind of wondered that. Yeah, crazy. Not a long gun. Right. I mean, yeah. so why not? Why, why not? <laughs> and I'm not a person who, I'm not criticizing everybody except the damn shooters and those of us who know what it is causing it and not doing anything about it. I don't, I, I just continue to think that, <laughs> I don't want to use the term because it's your term. But I think of it, it I, I feel like there are systems in place that and there are networks in place. And I tend to think that they are like good old boy networks. And there's this attitude of entitlement that allows some people. There we go. That was really neutral. Are you proud of how nice I'm being? That allows some people to feel like they have some sort of control over another set of people and they can treat them however they need to, to get whatever they want from them because it's their place. Well, they, you, you said that so politically correct. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I just think in general, I'm not particularly paranoid. No, you're not. I mean, there, there have been times when, you know, I, it wasn't that I thought people were against me. It's that people were really against me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah. make me paranoid. It just makes me, I don't know, observant, maybe. Aware. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you're one of those people who knows how to use and and has been able to observe uh, your your instincts. You know, your survival instincts, that's a big deal. 
because you can you can get yourself into some intense situations and then you can figure out how to get out of them too so i think that's important uh, to develop that whole instinct of well this doesn't this doesn't feel right 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 yeah. and, and as i get older i'm gonna be straight up as i get older <clears throat> i become um more patient with with some people and some things hmm. but i am I, I am unforgiving and judgmental about other stuff like right now people people being on um i'm trying to think what is the thing at the moment that just seems so trivial i i don't i can't even find a thing in the moment but i see members of my community and they are obsessed by some trivial, trivial, tiny, in my mind, trivial, tiny thing. And I think, do you, are you unaware that there are dead babies under the rubble in Turkey? Yeah. You're unaware of that? Yeah. So this thing right here seems important to you? Yeah. Oh, the, like the I am, I am M&M thing or of, something. What? The M&M commercial. Where they had oh, the candy and some, it has something to do with some color on the, on one of the candies. And it's, there are people uh, who really think that stuff is all that important. They do. Right. And the, and the very fertile Ohio Valley and the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. What the hell just happened? Was that Chernobyl? Did we get a Chernobyl event? Mm -hmm. But no, I've got to wonder about, you know, Triscuits or, oh. or, you know, I've got a I've got a wedding coming up, and do I spend twenty five thousand dollars on a dress? <laughs> you know, I, I and, and so all of that is to say that I am um, I'm judging people for the trivialities, and yet I know sometimes you just can't hold all of it in. Yeah. And you got to just be obsessed with whatever that one thing is. I get that. It's I, all yeah. it's me. It's me. I'm not. It's not anybody else. It's just well, me being who I am. Well, you know, Frank Herbert named it. He called it Gatla, and I've remembered that word because it fits. It is the description of the tiny little mosquito that distracts you when you're trying to sleep or focus. And it's Gatla. Gatla. You're just thinking about the Gatla. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, uh, I heard I heard tale of a rumor oh. that you were trying to encourage your mother to become a drug dealer by buying her a burner phone. And I want to hear the I want to hear the whole story. <laughs> oh, I'm such a bad influence. I I, I think I've got her on CBD too. <laughs> oh my gosh! I think mama. She hasn't admitted to it yet, but I think she's using that pain cream. But, oh, uh, yeah, you know, we had a, an experience with a burner phone and are still having it, actually. And it's turned into two phones now. And the thing is, she uh, she was get, trying to get rid of her current provider you know, cell phone provider because they were so expensive and and she's just not using the cell phone anymore. Mm -hmm. And so she just really wanted something that would be there in case her regular phone number went down because of weather or something like that. She could have yeah. a little cell phone and, you know, so it should not be a hard process. And I got to tell you, those little burner phones are, they really are made for drug dealers. They really are. <laughs> it's, I well, mean, there ain't much to them. That no, no, you can go and buy a phone that is not some luxurious iPhone. So you can get like a Nokia flip phone, which actually has a really good screen. If you need glasses and stuff, it's really easy to see. And huh. uh, so it's flip phone. It's tactile. You can feel the buttons, which is also a nice thing if your eyesight is bad. And, yeah. Uh, so that phone that I got mom was better than the one that she had as far as for her. And it was mm -hmm. under 20 bucks, like 19 bucks. And the plan is unlimited talk text uh, for USA, Mexico, and Canada. Not that she'll be traveling, hopefully, uh, so <laughs> that far. And it was 15 bucks, and that included tax. 
So for $38, I got her a new phone and a month's worth of service, which oh led God. into tech support hell. I mean, oh. it was the right thing to do for mom. There was a potential snowstorm coming in. I didn't want her to be left without a cell phone because her phone yeah. would surely, her regular phone usually does go out when it snows. Yeah. And it was, it was, the phone took 14 minutes to set up because I timed it to make it go from here's a brand new phone to here's a phone that has a plan chosen, blah, 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 blah. Um, basically, you buy the phone and then you buy at the same time a gift card is how I think of it for however much of a plan you want. They probably they have four or five different levels of plans and you can get these little little prepaid whatevers and pay cash for them and you can literally set a phone up by a serial number and and not have a name attached to it in about 14 or 15 minutes is that crazy uh, uh, that, it, it makes perfect sense though doesn't it well for yes and for those of us uh who are paranoid about being tracked by the uh -huh. government by the government, anyway. Uh, it, this is a way to have a cell phone, but not have a name attached to it. So, and now this time next week, we'll be getting knocks on our doors from Secret Service going, ma'am, we want to talk to you about your podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, we want your mother's name and address. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, she's innocent, I can tell you. But it was, it was crazy. And that's why they call them burner phones. And that's well, why yeah, drug dealers. Once you're done with it, you just take out the SIM card, throw it away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's like, I mean, I see that happen on cop shows all the time. They just pull out the little old SIM card, I, mash it under their foot, and throw it in the garbage. Wow. Well, the same time, there was more to Mom's phone saga. Basically, there's another phone and. I was trying to port her number over to it. And then she tells me, I don't need that number anymore. And so, you know, but it was already set up and in process, all this stuff. But uh, I, I spent some time doing the tech support to get this stuff done. It was a little bit of a learning curve. And the same time that was going on, uh, I I was gifted my my husband's phone. And, and he changed out the SIM cards one morning. On, on <laughs> and I've been in tech nightmare ever since then because Google thought that that fraud had, was being committed on my accounts because of the SIM card change, and oh, they shut down no. every damn account that I have. So, so every time I try to do something new, but that is that I've done in the past, like go to the Podbean site and open open up the episode page. I have uh -huh. to I have to re log in and remember my old password and change it to something new. And the requirements for new passwords are getting by Google specifically are getting so ridiculous that I'm I'm starting to get PO'd about it. Uh because they're now saying, you know, everybody has their system to remember passwords by. I don't care. I believe everybody has a system. So it's like it might be the last four digits of of a of your old phone number or it could be your house number and your great aunt's initials. You know, everybody's got a system. And if you can you can no longer change your password to something that was similar. So like if you have something that ends with an exclamation point, you can't change the password to be the same thing but having two exclamation points right right and so it you basically don't get to create a system for for changing passwords anymore and that is has not only did it blow my mind but it's going to blow everybody's mind when it when it happens to them too so there are answers to it but for now, there's a mule in the ditch because if I want to get on to eBay, I now have to remember my old password and then create a new password. And it's like, whatever. Well, I mean, w we were saying before the show that it's like weird girl tech because I took my 
my computer in to have the operating system upgraded uh, about a month ago, I guess. And now, of course, I mean, I got used to the new operating system. It wasn't so different as the old one. But now, oh, every time I try to do something with the computer, it's like, well, what is the username and password for that? And I'm like, well, you used to remember that. Oh right. right. No, you you're you're a whole different brain now. Okay, let me uh, let me put that in. Change the password because I'm doing the same thing, changing my passwords as I go. And then there'll be other things like, I, real quick, you know how it is with tech. Real quick, I wanted to print something out real quick. Well, yeah. you know the computer. It's an older computer and it's slow. And but I turned on the printer first and I was ready to go. And I and I hit print and it went. Well, what? What a printer do you want me to use? I was oh. like, the printer you always use. It's sitting right there beside you. Use no. that one. Oh. oh, no, no. No, I, I have to see. Oh, let me see if I recognize where that is. Oh, wait. Here's a whole list. Then they give me my neighbor down the hills printer, probably my neighbor up the hills printer. Oh. And then finally, it gets to my printer, which has its own little name, of course. Yeah. And then I have to do all the... Oh, the wireless connecting crap. Uh, anyway, it was not something that happened real quick. But right. now I can print from my computer again. Which is, you know, it's very good. But at it the is. same time, man, things are starting to bud outside. Uh -huh. The last thing I want to do is be stuck in computer hell. But yes. <laughs> I guess it's my time to do that for a while. But so... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I well, wanted, and, and I went into that whole uh, upgrade my OS system. I mean, my OS, like the youngins say, um, knowing that it was going to be, you know, a learning curve. But right now, these two months are my learning curve months. Mm. My dentist the other day, we were uh, we're getting getting ready for my partial plate. We'll be in in a couple weeks, and okay. he and he said, I just, you know, I want to say to you because he's the sweetest man. I just want to remind you that there's going to be a bit of a learning curve with this. And I thought, God, is mm -hmm. there anything on earth that has not got a learning curve? Maybe no. I'm just dumb. Well, I don't know. I just may not be smart enough to function, really. Oh, no. You you are smart enough to function by far. I mean, and believe me, I, I've seen people who are not, and you are fine. But uh, you're just... You're just just same place as me. You don't want to spend your time teching out. I don't. I don't. Yeah. So <laughs> people keep coming up with new ideas. Yeah. For me. Hey, you know what? You could get on Reddit and you could do your own subreddit and you could. And I'm like, do you think I have nothing to do? Well, you know what you can do. You know what you can do for me is pick me out four hour chunks so that we can go get out in the field there and get get a hold of some of those plants that we were talking about oh from the yes farm. i was uh i was checking in the back here today to see if the ramps were up yet and they are not up yet but they might be on weird mountain i'm, I'm gonna I, be down there tomorrow i've got to go see my doctor at 2 30 in the afternoon he's down that way ah uh, well i feel like they are actually a little bit behind this this year stuff like that i feel i think we're about two or three weeks behind it's what from what little bit i've been able to see huh you know I wonder if we're that still was, getting there i wonder if it was that big freeze at winter solstice set everything back it might have been you know i will tell you facebook does a good job of documenting your posts you know i i always look at that share your memories thing that yeah. comes up and I can see, I always take some posts and I always have a folder it's called Go Outside. And then it'll have the year on it. Oh, that's nice. So it's like Go Outside 2016, 2017, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll post things through those years and it'll pull it up on Share Your Memories. So uh -huh. like to, today is an anniversary of a podcast that we published called A Tale of Two Weird Hearts. <laughs> oh, it must have been a Valentine's podcast. I believe it must have been. So I'm, I'm quite often I see stuff that'll have you and me in it, and I, quite often I see stuff that's just one of my photos, and it'll have some outdoor scene, and I can compare and say, oh, okay. So we had, you know, this was the anniversary of this snowstorm or or this ice storm 
or this flower being up. Are you seeing daffodils? Didn't you say something about the daffodils? Yeah, the they're blo they're blooming. Yeah, we're I'm, I'm ready. And the hyacinths, the big old beautiful smelling hyacinths are up. My favorites. I love those. I do too. I need. It was remind me of my grandmother because she had them uh, all along her driveway. Yep. And anytime you'd go to the car, you could smell that strong hyacinth smell. I, I love that smell. And I always have. And it, I know it gets to some people. I used to bring in a hyacinth in my office every year. Mm, I, I love used, it. I love it. I, that's so cool. I'm glad you told me that they were up. I, I haven't really. Yeah. Looked, my groceries delivered, you know. I'm not looking I know because you're, fa you're fancy. I'm not fancy. Very fancy. I do have some beautiful red tulips over here. I'm looking at them in the window. Oh. I did something yesterday. It was probably the sweetest thing anybody could do on uh, Valentine's Day. Okay. Some uh, friends of mine had decided they'd been together and they had a commitment ceremony, Lord, 10 years ago or something. They decided they wanted to get married. Oh. So I did their wedding yesterday on Valentine's Day, oh. just as the sun was starting. In the set, right beside the Swannanoa River, oh, they had beautiful daffodils all around, and um, and it was at a sheep farm. Hmm. So it was just as precious and beautiful as it could be. And the they gave me a present, which was a pot of big red tulips. Oh, nice! So beautiful, yeah. And I'm I want to remember that sweetness because it was just delightful. Yeah. And there were two little young ones, one of them probably about three and the other one maybe four or five. And they were just oh. playing in the water because it was warm yesterday. It playing was. in the water, throwing rocks. It was just, it was lovely. That sounds like it. Yeah. It That's was a good way. And I was busy, you know, all day reading cards for people at the shop who, you know, they came in saying, am I ever going to find true love? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it does exist, though. I don't know. Maybe it does. I think occasional love exists more. Yeah. You know, love the one you're with, you know, love the one you're with. <laughs> when you're down. Boy, I have listened to Sly and the Family Stone for the last uh, three days. Yes. You're getting ready for Mardi Gras. I guess. I don't know. I just, I remember that I used to listen to him quite a bit. And I really, I really, really like that band. I forgot how much I liked them. Oh, they're good. They're so good. Oh, so good. I, I think Sly Stallone is an overlooked talent. Um, mm -hmm. But <laughs> all the great ones are. So I, I have had a good time uh, listening to the music last week or so. And I got well, and I, I went through, you know, Burt Bacharach died and yeah. they were playing a lot of that. And that music hit me at a real particular time. And a lot of them were show tunes and real kind of pop tunes of the time. But, you know, you got to hear a lot of Dionne Warwick. And um, that was good. That was good, too. And mm -hmm. and the other day, what was it? September came up again. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. And I just stuck that into my phone. I said, "Just give me all the Earth, Wind, and Fire." Mm. Do you music. have a, a platform that you listen? I um, don't. I just put it on YouTube. Gotcha. And well, that's your platform just, then. Yeah, and and I'll you know it'll play one or two and. And five or six, and then it'll switch over to something sounds kind of like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I used to listen through Pandora. And yeah. It would do that. And and I think it is, I think it was Pandora. They would have this thing called Thumbprint Radio, and it was a learning app. So as you would thumbs up or thumbs down or oh. fast forward past it, it would note that and it would note the ones that you liked and it would try and play you stuff that sounded like that. Huh. So if you like a certain Lumineers song, it might play you their the Lumineers latest song or something. And oh, uh, I love it. Yeah, and I got to where I really liked that. They had introduced me to some music I hadn't heard in a while. I was uh, I was listening to Willie Nelson. I 
I did about an hour of Willie. <laughs> mm. Which that could be listening to music or smoking weed because there is a, a marijuana strain called Willie. <laughs> and that led me to listening to Wet Willie. <laughs> that was a really ambiguous statement. So then I went and listened to Wet Willie. Do you remember them? I do. I've decided I, I'm not a big Wet Willie fan. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And. It seems like they did a lot of kind of porno music, if that makes any sense. And it just had no appeal. Although I like the, the chords that they used were pretty good. So listen to me talking that way, critical. I'm cutting all that out. Nobody needs to hear that. <laughs> just needs to hear that we've been listening to music. It makes yep. the world sweet. Yep, it does. It does. So I went through a little phase where I was watching a lot of TV, and it just at you some were saying point that last me. week. I can't believe you're watching TV. That's yeah. so weird. I know it is. I binge watched Wednesday last night on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I thought like, you had already. I, I thought you had already watched all that. I had, and I went back oh. and watched it again. And oh, at that point, I picked up a ton of details that I didn't realize I had missed in the first place. Oh. So it's 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 kind of like one of those Disney rides. You remember the old haunted house ride? Yeah. I mean, I never did it, but I remember it. Once YouTube came around, people started posting their videos of the ride and people started deconstructing, you know, the frames on the videos and they were finding all these uh these things, these details about the ride, like look over here and you can see this ghost and look over here and you can do this thing. And it's real interesting for me. Oh. <laughs> Where's your, how's your garden doing? Well, I was just out there and did a little bitty uh, Facebook video. Uh, it's, um, it's okay. I mean, there's always tons of work to do. We got some fencing to fix, and got to fix my big old tater bed because it's the fencing's falling out. But okay, starting to sprout. Elderberries are starting to sprout. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I want to get on with it, but now the stuff that I would plant, I can't plant because it's root roots, and I have to wait till no wait. Where are we now? It's. I, I've already planted roots. Now I want to plant some above ground stuff, like some chard and stuff like that. But I have to wait till the moon changes, till it's waxing again. Right now it's waning. This this last moon really did affect me a little bit. I think. Oh, um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful it, for days and days. It was. It was. I was getting ready to ask you if you have noticed, because and I know the answer because we we talked about it, but. I didn't ask you, why do you think so much strange dreaming is going on right now? I, I do not know. And I'm a person who normally has pretty, pretty uh, impressive dreams, you know, yeah. you know, fun dreams or dreams that I feel like are tell me something. And I didn't realize that I was not dreaming or I was not remembering my dreams until I started having these vivid uh, just amazing dreams. And I don't know what the difference is. I don't. But yeah, I've had vivid dreams, like watching movies. Hmm. Yeah, I've had dreams that were long dreams. Um, yeah. I had a dream the other night, and then I woke up after the dream was over and got up and went to the bathroom, and then I came back and fell asleep almost instantly. And my dream opened back up again. And I oh, I love it when it. that happens. It's always interesting. It feels strange. It's like walking into a back room or something, walking into a just, you go into a different world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping, I love dreaming. I love it. I, I do too. I'm hoping for a repeat of a dream that happened to me years ago. And I, I don't know. I think that maybe by hoping for it, I kill the chance of it happening. So, but I still want it to happen. The flying dream. Oh, I love flying dreams. And I always fly the same way in dreams. I'm walking 
or uh, sometimes I'm running in dreams and my stride gets longer and longer until finally I'm just bouncing up into the sky. Boom, wow. boom, boom, boom. That's incredible. I and haven't then, had a flying dream in a few months. Where, where do you go? And, uh, where do you take oh, different yourself? places? Different places. Man. I often am going over what I assume to be northern Canada or northern Europe because they're big bands of um, evergreen trees, uh-huh. big pine forests and snow and mountain. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. I always fly. Well, the part of the dreams or dream that I can remember I'm already flying. Oh, that's nice. And I'm flying. I don't know if it's a flying carpet or a broom. And, but I kind of think it's a broom because I'm very much in charge. And it kind of feels like riding a motorcycle. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. And I always fly from east to west and then end up at the side of a cliff looking out over the ocean. Mm. And the ocean. yeah, yeah. Um, and and at least one time I was there with other other humans, but not on purpose. None huh. of us knew none of us knew each other, and we didn't speak either. So I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but then Gather, it feels scary. gathering by the sea. Yeah, mm-hmm. what huh. I want to do. Get back on that flying motorcycle or broom or whatever it is. I want to fly over that ocean and I want to just loop downwards and end up in New Zealand. <laughs> it is beautiful. Hey, thank you for spending your time with us here at Weird Mountain Gals. We sure do appreciate it. You know, I know time is the most important thing we have. So I promise that if you take your time to listen to us, we'll take our time to continue to be weird. Many thanks to Sunslice Records for all the help. We couldn't do it without you, Craig. Check out our social media for information, community, or a few laughs. WYRD Mountain Gals.